In Georgetown, the capital city of Penang, there is a stretch of iron bars that embedded in the middle of the road, located on the intersection between Penang Road and Chulia Street, in front of Audion Cinema. For outsiders, the location is just in front of the famed Nasi Kandar line clear. How the rail suddenly appeared in the middle of the road in the year 2005 is Georgetown uh, used to have a railway. Pretty close, it's actually a tram track. The iron bars on the road is a remnant of what used to be one of the most sophisticated transit systems in Southeast Asia. If the tram and trolley bus is seen as a reliable transit option today in the numerous uh, urbanist um, YouTube uh, video channels, why was its existence erased from the Georgetown roads? This is the story of tram and trolley bus of Georgetown, the forgotten public transport of Penang in the 20th century. The Spice Quest brought East India Company or EIC to Southeast Asia where most of the spice uh, traded in the ancient world was originated. Paper, clove, cinnamon and most price of all, nutmeg. Spice trade thrived together with the imports of tea from China caused a rapid development of Penang as a trading port in the um, 19th century. Rapid development of Penang resulted in exponential growth of population which means there was a demand for a better and faster mode of transport. And that is how the idea of having tram in Penang sprang up in the late 19th century. Tram is a kind of a mini uh, train moving on the rail, uh, moving passengers and cargoes in a short distance. Most of the tram history told in this video is derived from a book by Francis and Colin Ganley titled Penang Trams, Trolley Bus and Railways. Let's start with a question. Why did Penang in the early 20th century need a tram? Penang is the major port in Southeast Asia since it was taken by Captain uh, Francis Light, an officer in East India Company in the year 1786. But did you know that EIC, East India Company, is actually a private chartered company, not a government agency? After the dissolution of EIC and Penang transferred as a British Crown Colony in the year 1872, the, the port city grew into a trading and administrative centre. Tin ore from Pera, rice from Kedah and spices such as nutmeg uh, grown nearby in Balik Pulau brought after a British temporarily occupied Maluku from 1810 until 1840 and brought some seeds from there. The rapid development of Georgetown convinced the need of development of tram lines to transport cargo and passengers effectively. In 1885, a person named some Mr. Gardiner constructed a steam tram line between prison in Jail Road to Waterfall Gardens. The prison is still there by the way. Steam train is a kind of a mini steam train, small size steam engine on a 3 foot 3 inch track. If, for those of you who were born in, uh, after 1972, it's 1 meter. The original purpose of the line is to transport stone from the quarry near Waterfall Gardens to the prison. The stones were broken by prisoners and then used as construction materials which were used to build the numerous or historic buildings in Georgetown. And the steam tram locomotives was creatively named as Penang, Johor and Se Huge Lo for some reason. And later the steam tram line was extended from prison to Welt Key via Magazine Road. In the late 19th century, Welt Key uh, was the major wharf where ships loaded and unloaded the goods. Today, port activities move across the street in Prai where Welt Key today is a ferry terminal and floating villages known as Kongsi. And later the tram company was sold and become cast towards Penang Steam Trainway Company. Another tram line was constructed uh, between Simpang Enam and Welt Key via Penang Road and Chulia Street, the track that you can see, still see today. Due to its location in the middle of the dense uh, city area, steam trains were not allowed, noisy and a lot of um, smokes. Thus, tram were pulled by horses. However, uh, steam tram was hardly profitable due to high operation costs and horse-drawn tram between Simpang Nam to Chulia Street attracted a few. People were pitiful of horses pulling a large tram. In addition, that horse speed is similar to rickshaw or walking, not really fast enough. The tram system owner tried to sell the tram system to the private company, but eventually the Georgetown municipality bought the tram system. When electric was introduced in Penang in 1904, there was a glimmer of hope for the tram system. 
tram will be powered by electric instead of coal or horses which is cheaper to run, more reliable and faster. In 1904, in the same year, municipality has secured a $400,000 straight dollars with 4% annual interest payable in annual installment in 20 years. The loan was used to pay the tram owner and upgrade the tram system to electric. As a result, the golden age of Penang tram has begun. The tram service in Penang was opened to the public on 1st of January 1906. There are two classes in the tram. First class with padded seat on the back and second class with wooden seat hard. Tram is faster than any other transport available at that time. Rickshaws, or horses, bullock cart and of course uh, walking. Interestingly, tram operation was handled by uh, Electric Supply Department. Yes, the electric transit service was brought to you by Electric Department. The service was profitable in 1906, the first year of operation, tram gained a profit of 11,181 straight dollars. Tram service was successful uh, due to several reasons. The tram lines serve densely populated part of Georgetown. Tram is faster than any land transport available at the time in the early 20th century. And the frequency uh, of the tram is every 11 minutes. Try to beat that, Rapid Penang. When the World War One erupted in 1914, the operation cost of tram increased due to higher uh, material costs. Coal for electric, steel wires for the cables and also tram components to repair. The price went up as the demand for steel went up as well. In 1917, the profit of tram operation is only 10.9% which is not enough to pay $20,000 uh, for annual loan installment. Therefore, there was a need to introduce another uh, transit system that is more cost efficient than the tram. By 1922, electric tram has degraded due to tropical weather. Open air toast rack type used as a Penang tram is unsuitable for brutal tropical heat and rain as it lacks proper weather protection. Therefore, fully bodied trolley bus was suggested to replace the tram that exposed passengers to tropical weather, rain, and shine. In year 1925, trolley bus appeared on the Penang road for the first time. Trolley bus has several advantages over tram. Trolley bus move on the road instead of the rail and operation cost is cheaper too and the trolley bus improved the transit system profitability from 2,916 straight dollars in 1928 to 17,085 uh, straight dollars in 1933. Because trolley bus is so profitable and tram is not, in the year 1935, the last tram line between Welki and Aitam was terminated, leaving Penang with exclusively trolley bus transit system. Full switch to trolley bus made the transit system highly profitable again from 4 digit profits in 1920s to from this year in 1933 to 70,771 straight dollars in the year 1940. With 38 trolley bus in service, Penang had the second largest trolley bus service in Malaya after Singapore. At a similar time, trolley bus face a stiff competition from privately operated bus popularly known as mosquito buses. It, it was named uh, due to its small size compared to the large trolley buses, loud engine noise in the front and the erratic driving style of bus drivers zipping through the traffic. And now we know how the Penang style uh, driving may originate. Other than mosquito bus, tram and trolley buses face competition from other available transport modes. Rickshaws was popular among Chinese tokes as it was abundantly available and is cheap, uh, sending passengers door to door. Despite its walking speed, uh, rickshaw often operated within the city coverable within just 20 minutes walking. Meanwhile, British uh, officers and British people preferred motocab as it offered speed and comfort. By looking at the map uh, of the tram and trolley bus operation, did you notice that the northern part of the Georgetown where the most British live and many of the government buildings was not served by any tram and trolley bus lines? Because British officers and merchants view tram and trolley bus as the transport for the lower class as how tram was perceived in Britain at the time. When the World War II reached Malaya in 1942, there is an interesting story happened on trolley bus. 
The whole trolley bus operation stopped during the Japanese occupation. Uh, however, uh, in 1946, few months after the war ended, 36 trolley buses uh, were survived and back to service, just two uh, were destroyed and scrapped. Unlike in other places such as in Jakarta or Yangon uh, in Burma, now this Myanmar, where Japanese armies uh, stole trams and trolley bus to be brought to use in Japan, Penang trolley buses were deemed too old and ugly to be stolen. Does the trolley bus stay and resume its service to its pre-war schedule like nothing happened three years prior? A community project, Cherita, uh, gathered the stories of the old days from the elderly who live or work near Chulia Street. One of the interviewees, Ong Liang Ching, recalls that part of the route passed through Chulia Street, so we had the tram lines there, and later on we had trolley buses where they used electricity. That was a quite a nonsense. If they don't have a connected the lines running across the road, they wouldn't be able to move. And trolley bus were not really generally favoured at that time because it was expensive to maintain for the government, slower than bus for the people and also it ran two class system, first class, second class, a legacy of British colonisation. And despite its issue, trolley bus keep operating in Penang after Malaya achieved its independence in the year 1957 and new trolley buses are still being ordered and the last new trolley buses arrived in Penang in the year 1958. However, it's not the war that ended the trolley bus service, it was a cheaper diesel price. By 1960, it was clear that the bus is cheaper to run and faster than trolley bus. Francis and Ganley commented in the book Penang Trams, Trolley Bus and Railways, uh, Municipal Transport History, that trolley bus were killed by faster and agile private buses. Private bus zip fast on the traffic and flexible in movement and schedule the advantages that trolley bus didn't have because of the wires overhead. Lim Seng Seng bus, for example, only run between the city and Aitam took passengers away through the line from the government-run uh, tram and later the trolley buses. Sometimes literally in front of the trolley buses, the private bus come in front and took all the passengers. However, the disappearance of trolley bus in Penang is not really an isolated case, it is a global phenomenon. The timelines of the appearance and disappearance of tram and trolley bus in Penang is similar to what happened in the United Kingdom and elsewhere in the world. Trams were out of operation in London in 1952, so did trolley bus in the year, year 1962, 10 years gap. Singapore ended the trolley bus service in 1962 due to high operation costs and speed issues because trolley bus really slow, 40 km per hour. Diesel bus replaced the aging trolley bus and viewed as a modern and flexible suit the route increasingly filled with cars. The private uh, bus companies operated throughout Penang Island after the disappearance of trolley bus with no such brands such as uh, Lim Seng Seng from the city to Ayitam, Yellow Bus from city to Bayan Lepas, Hin Bus from uh, city to Tulok Bahang and Honorable Mansion at Sri Negara just late of the calmer. And as a result, the bus won. Trolley bus and tram are out, but at what cost? It is clear that terminating the trolley bus on the road since 1961 did not solve the traffic woes in Georgetown and in the whole Penang. When Penang opened the free industrial zones and attract foreign investors to set up factories in Praia and Bayan Lepas, the industrialization caused rejuvenation of Penang economy after decades of uh, decline as a major trade activities and finance moved to Singapore and also in Kuala Lumpur. As industry jobs were often offer better wages than other available jobs, the household income increased. Increased household incomes mean, uh, together with the subsidized petrol, make cars and motorcycles are increasingly affordable to many. This one, nah, not last choice. The bus faced the fate of previous trolley bus. It was all uncomfortable and viewed as the transport of the lower class. Due to dwindling passenger number, derelict bus and increasing cars on the road make the bus trip slower than ever. With the completion of Penang Bridge in the year 1985, the trip between Penang Island and mainland is faster and more comfortable uh, by car or motorcycle, reducing the demand of dilapidated bus uh, between the ferry terminal in Georgetown and industry area in Bayan Lepas. In the year 2004, Yellow Bus Company suddenly shut down after years of financial difficulties leaving thousands of people stranded across the island. Later in the year 2007, Rapid Penang took over the bus operation as the sole operator of land transport 
in Penang Island, closing down other uh, private bus companies. What once was the city of tram, bicycle, rickshaw and pedestrian is now city of cars. This is a reality of Georgetown streets nowadays. Therefore, more and more people move away from the city to live in less noisy suburban areas. Suburban houses consume a lot of land compared to compact buildings in Georgetown. In addition to the car-centric developments such as this drive through only shops in Seberang Jaya, which cause loss of the vast agricultural land plus the idea of the reclamation to create more land for more car-centric areas. Rapid Penang faced similar challenges as what Yellow Bus Company faced previously aging fleet, competition from private vehicles and unpunctuality due to the horrible traffic since a bus and other, uh, uh, other vehicles share the same route. Furthermore, unlike in Kuala Lumpur, the only option for visiting outsiders is cash with exact fare, no change given. With these fare structures, who is willing to pay the, with the heavy coins and bundles of one ringgit? Pass Mutiara card is available for monthly subscription but non pinangai seem to pay uh, 50 ringgit for it. Thus, what are the remedies for the never-ending traffic pain in Penang? Penang has envisioned a public transport system as a part of a Penang Transport Master Plan or PTMP. To date, none of the any transit system plan in PTMP is ever constructed. Penang State Government and Georgetown City has a limited power to improve the public transport. Why? Because public transport is the responsibility of federal government who approve and license the operators. The best that state uh, government and city can do is this. CAT or Central Area Transit introduced on 23rd of February 2009 which largely follows the former tramway route. Cat bus is uh, free to ride in hope to reduce the traffic within the city. And double decker bus has been briefly reintroduced in Penang in 2016 after the disappearance of the double deck uh, trolley bus and introduced, reintroduced in 2022 because the earlier double deck bus was sent to Kuala Lumpur, especially to Ampang, which is 47 years after the termination of double decker uh, trolley bus. The main issue with the bus uh, in Binang is that with the 30 minute frequency lack of bus only lane and limited land available to make a bus lane make the bus trip in the city and also in the whole island in the whole state is painfully slow. By looking back at the PTMP, one of the key planned transit lines is Bayan Lepas LRT, 23 kilometers in land connecting Komta in the middle of the Georgetown city border with the heritage zone to the airport and industrial area in Bayan Lepas. With a happy coincidence, the Komta station of the planned LRT is located nearby former bus terminal in Prangin, which is a Komta bus terminal today. Due to prolonged political dispute, Bayan Lepas LRT and other planned transit line in Penang never materialized due to funding and the legal issues. It was a vision long enough that Bayan Lepas LRT has its own fandom wiki page of its own. I didn't know the LRT can have a fandom wiki page like an anime character. Finally, on May 2023, Bayan Lepas LRT received a green light for its construction after years of political tussle. Bayan Lepas LRT construction will reintroduce the transit system in Penang more than 60 years after the termination of trolley bus service to ease the traffic congestion that keep worsening each year, years after tram and trolley bus were disappeared in Penang. If you want to see the remnant of tram line in Penang, there is a short stretch of a former tram line that has been rehabilitated in the year 2005. The rehabilitated stretch starts from Chulia Street Junction and ends in front of Choi Rasta Market. It is safer to see the tram line at the Chulia Street Junction as the tram line is nearer to the road curb as the former tram line uh, on Penang Road is located in the middle of unforgiving Penang speeding traffic. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new about tram history in Penang and how the tram and trolley bus system fell into obscurity and forgotten. Thank you so much again for watching and see you in the next video.